Hello and welcome to the next part of the Elm Goose Driven tutorial. And no keys were drawn in any of the previous parts. What we do here is we are drawing uh, the representations of different types uh, without any purpose, seems so. Um, but we probably train the intuition about how the types work and that will lead us somewhere. I see something in the end. <laughs> um, before, before we were rendering uh, trees and lists and grids of things and that stuff and now I want to make something um, a bit more complex just a bit uh, and to make things uh, to render the lists for example uh, as the, every item rotates a bit after one after another so that we will have the spiral or a circle uh, distribution, something like that. And for that uh, we need to change the renderer type again. Let's split it into lines because it gets more and more complex. This way those are all the same, just for readability. And now, uh, instead of a point, it will accept the matrix, uh, which represents the, the state of the transformation of every element. If you worked with the canvas before, uh, there is the transformation matrix uh, when you draw something and then you put the transformations on the stack uh, so you save them uh, and if you want to back backtrack them and this is the calculations are backed up by the affine matrix a, a matrix of fine transformations and this is what we will pass but we will not go into the the mathematical details of how these things work uh, and the first step in not going into details is just to copy paste uh, let's name it Combine transform, am I right? Elm. Combine it, transform, that's right. Um, I have prepared, uh, because the, uh, the package, the Elm canvas package, uh, doesn't expose the matrix inside. Actually, it's just the calls to the JavaScript canvas. Um, and what I wanted to achieve is to to have the access to the matrix and to store these transformations in it uh, so that we would be able to apply them for every element uh, and to change it a little bit. So... That's it. Um, this is the matrix, I think, three, three by two. Uh, it has different values. Uh, initially, it's just the identity matrix. Um, you can reset it. So 
uh, set it back to identity. Um, you may rotate the um, to store the rotation um, action or the, um, in the matrix so that it could be performed again and again uh, and combined with the all the previous transformations um, and those those functions work the same they accept some previous state of the transformations and by um, dot multiplying the matrices uh, it gives the new matrix with the combined transformations. So there is reflect, there is shear, scale, um, scale for both um, axes and scale for the particular one and as well as translate. So everything is in here and stored in the matrix. No jokes about metrics. <laughs> um, let's import the model and transform, and let's just uh, say it's M or I don't know transform CT transform. Yeah, let's name it transform. Like it. Yes. Um, and we need to um, uh, we need some function uh, that will apply this matrix to the elements and there is the way to do it. Um, We will name it apply and it takes the matrix transform form matrix um, and returns the setting There is the method, uh, the function transform. I think it's wrong to to name the functions methods. That's why I correct myself. Uh, especially in this case, it is uh, okay. Maybe if the function uh, like this one. If we have the function like this one, because it takes the object, you would say, and returns the new state of the object, and you may consider it itself, but it doesn't change the the object. So no, no methods here, just functions. Um, we needed to put it in single term. And oh no, it was sorry in the different direction. Setting. We need to import. Yes, and transform it was in the advanced, I suppose. Yes, uh, what it does, it just creates the, the setting which we need. 
uh, this list in Goton thing is the same as saying this. Let's leave it this way, not to complicate things. Uh, but in this case, we may let's let me show you some Elm tricks. Mm, we remove the the last argument, and then this is just a composition of functions. This is the trick. <laughs> uh, you just replace the arrows of this kind with this kind, and how it works from from the algebraic point of view, I won't tell in this tutorial. Uh, there are a lot of them covering. Uh, search for the function composition but we're drawing here no mathematics at all uh, so uh, our renderer now should accept the matrix which is just the combination of transformations uh, to that point. So now it's not the position, but the matrix. And we don't need this one anymore. And we uh, set it to zero. Uh, but we apply the matrix here. Sorry, matrix as the setting. We will have to change other renders as well as we do always, but compiler helps us and tells where are we wrong. In this case, since it is just renaming, so compiler doesn't tell. Uh, so we just pass the same arguments here. Uh, but for the sake of consistency, I'll remain those, uh, rename uh, these parameters as well. We'll remain same. Uh, here and finally to the list renderer which gets a little bit more complicated now um, but just a little as usual no huge changes um, now it accepts the metrics and and we take this matrix, let's name it M here, just to make it shorter and hide the file list again. Uh, and now it's M translate, in this case, zero and 45, for example. Transform, translate, transform. And here we move it by 10, same way. 10. And here we use the distance. Sorry, I forgot the bracket. Distance. Okay. And 
and here as well. And now our inner helper also doesn't accept the point anymore, but the matrix of transformation. Uh, and let's make, name it lock, lock, local matrix. And for for the case of item, it just renders it in the same position. Let's get comma back again for some time. Um, the same way as we translated it here, we will translate the local matrix, local matrix uh, by item width and let's say 10. I just have the numbers prepared, so I don't think that those are no numbers for me. Um, and in this case, it's item width plus 15. No, I don't know. No, not plus 15. Let's leave it that way and we'll see how it goes. Y5, zero. So what we do here, uh, we render the item at the place, then we move a little bit to the, not the, a little bit, but by the width of the item uh, to the right, and to put a comma there and a bit down. Uh, and then we move again by the, item width oh, and the width of the comma. So that was this 15, for example. Uh, and draw the rest items. After that, we will check that uh, this render works. And just when we fix other renders. In this case, it is we again accept the matrix and let's name it M. I just just to to have the values by hand. I, I'm not removing this line below. Uh, so it will be transform, transform, come on, translate. It's just the keyboard, it's not me. Um, so is it right? We translate it by zero the row and uh, the y axis is moved by the item height multiplied by the index of the row. Seems right and the only render we left to fix is the tree render. Now it accepts the matrix and in this case we just pass it there. And in this case, we move, we move it oh. so this is M transform form minus 
item width and then item width plus 10 oh, from lowercase m and m and again we pass the matrix here and we do the same transformation but with a plus sign on the x axis we don't need the parentheses here i suppose yes uh, what is the problem here the argument is a tuple of type Why is it? Why is it? I think it just. Uh, oh, sure. Transform. Translate. Sorry. And with this M. Transform, translate, and transform, translate. Yes. Uh, okay. So we fixed all our renders, except in this case, we need to uh, transform, transform we need all the transformations. So we have the same tree as before, but moved a little bit to the left. What if we do transform, translate, uh, move it by X a bit further? It works. Fifteen. Okay, no, it's one hundred fifteen. Yes, and fifteen here. So that's it. We we got our tree back again, but render it using uh, by combining the transformations. Let's do our spiral now. Let's just take the list renderer. And yes, now we copy paste because we'll change the body uh, a bit, but it will be similar. Spiral, spiral. So our spiral renderer will accept lists and let's change it here so that we see the changes right away. Uh, let's leave the transform here and now we need we need it to be the list of maybe values with the integers inside. Uh, let's do it like uh, just one, nothing, then and just three, then uh, just two. The, we, the shifting we do here is not right for the least renderer. Should we we'll fix that? 
So in this case, we have to add something, probably the, the width of the comma here, not just the distance, but Okay, let's change it to the list render, just to fix that, just to make uh, uh, to keep the code clean and perfect, kind of perfect. Uh, let's say it's item width plus 15. I suppose this is the width of the comma. So yeah, it's closer to what we expected. And we changed it back to the spiral. Spiral. The spiral is wrong because it's the copy paste. Uh, will we change? Yes, let's change it as well. And what we do now, we translated it, distance and that stuff, uh, we just need to rotate the, the, other, the other items here. So let's do this. Uh, this way. Okay. Yes. This way. So here we translate them and let's just rotate them before. A degrees 30, for example. So we get something here, we have the bracket, which we don't need anymore. Uh, what if we change it to different angles, uh, for example, 45, our items are rotated after being translated. So if we move the order matters, actually, uh, they're rotated, they're translated and then rotated in this case. In this case, they're first rotated and then translated. And we may reduce this uh, why is it so? If we re reduce the value. Why does then they bend more? Oh, because the matrix translates the, the transformation moves. Okay, I hope you got it. <laughs> uh, it. It doesn't mean I got it. <laughs> uh, I hope you got it. So, um, it's something weird, but still. Um, we don't need these brackets anymore, as well as commas. As well as commas. But, let's change it a bit. Let's uh, let's remove this distance variable. Let's first translate it uh, to item width minus ninety. Uh, there get messed somehow uh, 
let me figure out why is it because it could be because of this translation no it's not hmm let me think a bit uh, so actually if I change this value uh, they bend less if I change it to zero they just keep being rotated and moved uh, so I just need to find some some nice value to make them move less so 40 and if, if I increase that not to minus they they just get more separated uh, or maybe I should reduce the item width no okay let's make it like let's make them couple like this into crowds you don't have to keep the distance uh, let's leave it this way so it's important for you for me that you understand that we change this value and they just uh, get closer and closer to each other if we are going to minus uh, this is because I want I want to show um, more items, of course, in this list. Oh no! Uh, Sloppy. For example, fifty of units and. Uh, Okay, let's make it just uh, just three. And what if we don't translate it? So, oh yeah, maybe also this translation also affects uh, their style because if we remove it they get less distributed uh, probably we add the some transformation in the process uh, which we don't need to in this case we don't move it so let's leave it this way uh, oh, and still I ha I want to move it lower. Let's try. Yes, it doesn't help because those transformations they add to each other. Hmm. What could we do? Uh, this is um, not very convenient because um, in the case of Elm uh, Canvas package we can't um, separate uh, we can't stack the transformations so in this case we would uh, roll back one uh, the translate for, for the items and draw them one by one. Uh, I'll tr try to play with numbers to get uh, to get this spiral looking good. Uh, but let me just show you what will happen if we reduce the the rotation degree. Uh, 
let's change it to the goose for example and change it to the goose renderer so these are a lot of Chinese characters it seems like they're forming the heart somewhere there uh, or just face palms I like those face palms yes uh, so let me find the numbers and the transformations right and I will get back to you uh, so seems in this case we need to uh, I'm not sure if we will succeed in it but let's try just for the sake of the tutorial uh, we need to move only the first item um, forward and the others not uh, and let me show you uh, why it's all happening here because if we remove the translation uh, we just get this this list which is which is displayed correctly it it, it translates uh, by this point uh, and every item is translated uh, by this point but then we rotate them and this is where things get complicated uh, and if we change the rotation it gets even more complicated uh, it could be that I have implemented the matrices wrong but uh, if you try the if we try the calculations with uh, separate items they were good uh, I wanted to show you one another thing what was it oh yes uh, if we remove the transformation and move them not uh, above each other and rotate them afterwards it's something else what if we move it now <laughs> it gets distributed uh, because it, the translation becomes the uh, radius in this case this doesn't help what if we move uh, below not above but below what happened mm, this is a little bit closer okay let's try to uh, to keep the number of how many items items we have rendered and started with uh, zero uh, should we put it render items for example here this will be the index of the item and we have to pass it and increase it this way and then as I said if it's the first item and uh, as I said we can replace the blocks uh, just anywhere they're just pluggable if index is zero then translate 
and else else do nothing of what means do nothing do nothing it means identity function not that it didn't help but at least we tried uh, Uh, let's move it to the next section then. I will try to find out how to move this spiral here in the center. Uh, I've tried. You've seen. <laughs> uh, I think I'll find the way. And then we will get images, the first step, and then animations. That's it for now. Thank you, and see you in the next part. Now, roll back and credits. I figured it out for this part. Uh, let's just don't don't pass the matrix the matrix uh, inside the recursion. Not this time. Uh, here we have to have it. And we only have the source matrix. Now, let's pass this one in the item renderer. And what we will do is to place uh, each item individually around the circle for now and then work out with the circle uh, how many items items are here I keep saying items let's make it 100 So the radius for now will be 40. Uh, and we need the uh, calculate the angle coefficient. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know this how this word is pronounced in English. Coefficient probably. Uh, the amount the angle uh, on which we r rotate and move each each item in the circle. So there are sectors in the circle and we move each item one by one. So the coefficient will be two pi, like the length of the circumference uh, divide by it's the whole circle it's not the length of it's not that length <laughs> or is it whatever um, divide by the number of items we have so for every item mm, we have the the amount on the circle uh, to move it and and now we have to have the matrix for every element let's do it for And we get the index inside. We will get the index inside. Uh, so we just move the basic, the base matrix, which is, for example, translated to some uh, to some point or even rotated. Uh, let's name it matrix now because we have space. And what we 
do we transform translated translated uh, to the proper position which is radius multiplied by cosine of the index multiplied by the uh, this coefficient I mentioned before and this is the x position and this is the y position but it has to be sinus of course yes and now and now uh, we give this matrix for every element using its index matrix for and now we have the spiral Ooh. let's move it down a bit and play with play with it a little bit more uh, for example uh, it's not the spiral it's the circle sorry not yet uh, let's make it larger example uh, or even larger so you see where it goes uh, if we reduce the number of elements then we'll see they are distributed in the circle just that way but yes what what if we want to have a spiral instead let's reduce the number for now uh, that means that we need for every item we need a different radius so we also get index in here and uh, say it's the base radius I don't know base or, 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 or <laughs> maximum radius yes max radius is fine um, we divide index uh, by the number of elements similar to this and multiplied by the max radius and so we pass, pass this index here inside this is the spiral which gets full circle it's not the full circle Ah, because we do we have another yes it's full circle because the uh, center point it's like goes this this much we may append some value to to it to make it more 15 30 so you see uh, the first angle and then it rotates um, it's a full circle uh, but if we want for example uh, to make it two circles what do we do we divide it by two or no it's not the radius we divide it's the angle coefficient uh, we multiply it by two, I suppose. 
Uh, seems distributed. <laughs> Let's make it more. Yeah, so this is the spiral. Uh, if you want four, four loops, six loops, and so on. Uh, let's make it small again. Something in between. Large again. So that's it. Also, let's try to add some number here. So this is the spiral, as I promised. Can we rotate it? Rotate degrees uh, 20. Yes. OK, it was after the tr first rotate, then trans translate. That's it. So, till the next part, thank you again.